Hey everyone, it's Chris from the Pigeon Letters Design Team. Thanks for coming to paint trees with me today. I think the key here is to keep them loose and I'll teach you how to do that. So let's get started. Since we're heading into fall, I thought we would paint both some regular trees and some fall trees and maybe even get into some winter pines if we have time. So I want to make sure you have your supplies, watercolor paper, 140 pound cold press, clean water, paper towels. I'm using Pigeon Letters brushes today. This is a size six and this one is a size two. Those are the only two brushes I'll be using. Uh, this will be for the main part of the tree and the two will be to add um, trunks and maybe details. I have a whole bunch of sort of just pretty rainbow colored paints here. Um, my red is a scarlet lake. I have a cadmium orange, Windsor yellow deep. I have a sap green and um, an olive toned green and then some browns. Get a lot of clean water on your brush, maybe tap it off a little bit. I'm gonna hold my brush up high. I don't wanna have like a lot of like control here when I do my trees. I wanna have them be kind of light and really abstract a little bit. So I'm getting my six, I'm getting some water, tapping it off. It might be hard to see when I use just water. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of green pigment on my brush. You can use just water, but I'm gonna do this so you can actually see it. But we wanna start light, very light on our greens. Um, and then we're gonna add darker tones for, for shadows, right? So very lightly, we're gonna sort of make some, some shapes. Those are almost circular, a little puff ball -y maybe, and squiggly. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm not going for perfect symmetry. Trees really aren't perfectly symmetrical generally but you see how I'm leaving a little white space. I'm not filling in a big blob. A little more water, let's see. Some squigglies like this. Mm. Again, I don't, I don't want it to be symmetrical, so sometimes you have like, but it's gonna be kind of, still kind of rounded, I guess I should say. Got a little bit darker there. I didn't really intend for that yet, but I'm just using a mix. So I left, that's sort of where we're gonna start. Let's get a little sap green, just traditional green, and add some highlights sort of at the bottoms, right, of all the little marks you made, okay? Underneath side, right, underneath side. So if you look like a real tree, the sun hits you know the outer or the top branches, and then the, the more center of the tree or underneath is gonna have like the darker tones. So then I'm gonna get even darker greens. This could be, this is a um, deep sea green from Daniel Smith, and I'm gonna add even more dark tones, okay? I'm doing this while it's wet. This is a wet on wet technique so that you get those fun bleeds. And now I'm gonna go back in with water and I'm just gonna connect the dots a little, if that makes sense. I'm gonna to try to take some of my white space, and some of these areas and just kind of blend them in. So there's a little more touching going on. Um, I think that's the word. I'm gonna add a little bit lighter. This is a green gold, I'm add a little bit lighter green here, but with lots of water. I just want like a little brighter highlight. Cause this is a summer tree. Maybe there's still some of those baby leaves in there. And I know that's a lot of variation and maybe that's too much variation for you. And if so, continue to kind of blend with your wet brush without really any paint on it, okay? All right, let's see how we're doing here. All right, I'm gonna go back to my darker green again. Okay. So I think that's good for our first like main part of our tree. Now I'd like to add a trunk. I wanna do it while it's still wet because I do want the trunk to bleed and blend a little. I'm gonna start with like a, probably like a burnt umber. Just a 
general brown and I'm going to do this in a really specific manner. I'm gonna get a decent amount of paint on my brush and I'm gonna go with just a line, kind of a sketchy line that comes out, okay? This will be one side of the trunk and I wanna do kind of a sketchy line down the other side, okay? Then I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna actually just put water in the middle. I'm gonna to try to all right, touch the sides here that I just painted and I wanna blend them to the center. Does that make sense? And I'm fine with touching with some pigment up into the branches and even pulling like a branch out, okay? All right, and that could be even a little thicker wanted to there could be one coming out here as well I like to make the trunk a little bit interesting and I'm gonna fill the center in with water now so hold tight but I'm not filling in every part you see how there's a lot of white then I want to get something a little darker maybe almost like a sepia and kind of blend that I want a little bit of a darker brown because I want to add the edge, right? This is the edge of the tree. It's really the outside. And I want it to stand out and have a little bit of dimension. So like that, but I like to keep it really sketchy. I don't, I don't like to have it sort of all filled in or all be really solid. And I like to leave the ends kind of going like this, like the roots would go into the ground. And I really like the bleed of the trunk up into the into the tree. And if you don't like that, just get get a little more green and just add some shadow in there. So I like that for our first tree, quick and easy, not too, too much detail, but a little bit of detail just to make it interesting. Okay, now that we have the hang of the tree shape, let's do a similar one. I guess this is like, what, like a maple tree or an oak tree or something. Let's do a similar one over here, but let's do a fall tree. So again, we're gonna start with very um, little paint and a lot of water. I am still gonna get a little bit of green, um, just so you can see it, and also because maybe it's early fall and there's a mix. So this is gonna be one of those colorful trees that has a lot of different colors, so. Let's go ahead and make some shapes. Maybe this tree is a little longer uh, or taller, I guess I should say. Again, lots of water, but I'm gonna make this go down this way a little more. And right, hopefully you can see a little bit of that. So we have a little of our green in there and I like that as kind of our base. Again, there's a lot of white. So let's start with a little yellow. I'm gonna get just some Windsor Yellow Deep, just a little bit, not too much. And let's put a little of that even in here with our you know, greens. And I'm gonna put it more to the outside and maybe the top. And it's gonna start off really pale like this and then we're gonna you know, keep adding color to it. So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna do a little more yellow, maybe down here, very bright. But we do ultimately want it to be pretty, pretty colorful, right? Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go for some cadmium orange because I am still gonna keep adding color to this. And now I'm gonna add it orange a little bit sort of underneath like we did with the dark green over here. It's gonna be under the yellow and I know this is really still hard to see at this point and it seems very abstract. It doesn't really look like a tree, does it? All right, I'm gonna go back in with a little more green. I think we need a little more color in here where maybe the leaves haven't quite turned yet. There's still some green on this tree. I don't want all these colors to blend into a mush because then it will just be a brown tree. I'm going to let some of the colors sit separately and, ta and tap them in. Maybe that's the right word. We're gonna tap them in. 
All right. And then last, I am just gonna get a little bit of this Scarlet Lake, which is kind of a orangey red. This tree just has a touch, a touch of red, a couple places. It's just starting, just starting to go, to go a little bit red. And won't overdo it, but I do wanna put in just a little more color. I want this to be a really vibrant, tree. All right, um, what I want to do while this is wet right now is go ahead and I'll keep using my two. Start again with my burnt umber and I'm going to start my trunk in a similar way as the first one. Kind of giving it a little shape and coming up and some Branches going off here a little bit, right? Got a little crazy there. All right, I'm going in with the water in the middle. And then, right, we're gonna do the sepia, some sepia tones, a little darker. Brown. Bring that down a little straighter. You can just play around with it and see what works. And you can add like a little bump, bumps on the tree. And then I also wanna just go in here. We didn't do it on this one. We could go back and do it. Just some teeny little even use a smaller brush if you have it. Some teeny little branches going up into the leaves. Just a couple places where they're peeking through. Again, it's totally fine if it bleeds in. They even come out the top a little bit. Follow that through a little. And then I think that gives it a little more realistic look. I like how this trunk has a lot of variation in it. I think I'm gonna touch it with a little red again and it'll be interesting to see how this dries. It always dries a little paler, you know, than you start. So sometimes it's fun to really add some really bright spots. And then we still have like some of our, just, you know, down here, our little dark green spots where the tree hasn't really, really turned yet. In the center here, maybe where there's a little less sunlight. I think that's kind of fun. Um, We'll add a little orangey sprigs here where the branches poke through. What do you think of that? I think that's kind of a fun fall tree. Okay, let's try our last tree, which is gonna be a pine tree. So a wintry kind of pine. Some people like to do these really spiky. Some people prefer to do these uh, with sort of thicker, kind of fatter, uh, more filled in pine. So every time I paint one, it comes out differently. So I think we should just allow ourselves the freedom to have that happen and see what happens. I guarantee if you paint these trees and practice them every time, it will look different. And I think that's kind of what's awesome about it. So I'm just getting some green for my palette here. It's just whatever's left over. I, I do think it has a little blue tinge. And if you think about like a blue fur or something, uh, those are really pretty pine trees. So if you want to bring some blue, maybe like French ultramarine or a cobalt blue in there, I think that could be fun. We're going to start off again with lots of water, holding our brush up high. I'm using my six and I'm just going to use these sort of sweeping motions to get the shape of a pine tree. So starting at the top and we're just going to sketch some branches in. So some are just on the outside, some are in the center, right, coming towards you. So that's like towards you. 
And then we have some, and they kind of flick up at the end. And we'll go kind of for symmetry, get a little more paint here. And we don't, some of this will connect and some will leave some white space, right? So hopefully that's not too much of a reflection and you can see it. As we get towards the bottom, I'm gonna push down more, sort of like a little bit thicker down here. And I think that's generally a decent, a decent shape, like overall shape. So we're gonna do a similar effect that we did with our other trees, which is to go in with a darker green. So get something pretty dark. Again, if you wanna mix a little of your blue in with it, I think that could be, you know, gives it a little different look than just a normal tree. And then what I'm gonna do is again, touch the bottoms. Right, here's the shadow where the interior of the tree is. And so a lot towards the center and then the underneath sides of these branches. So same, same idea as what we were doing with these other trees. So you can see the white space that kind of gives the effect of maybe snow or just, you know, where, where you can see through the branches. Again, I like a lot of contrast, so I like to add a lot of that and it's okay to have some of that come sweeping sweeping out, give that look. So you have to sort of, you know, do it to where you like it and see what you think of your, your tree. That's a pretty simple one. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna get my two. And again, we'll do our same thing. We'll start with a brown. We'll probably start with a little darker brown. It's also interesting if you add um, blues into your browns. It can make really cool color. And I'm gonna pick a point sort of at the center and I'm gonna do my little lines. And I'll go back with water. A little too much water there actually. And it's probably a little off center, which is funny. Goes up a little higher on this side, maybe. And if you want to add a little bit of that coming through here, maybe there's a couple places where you know we can see a little bit of that trunk in the tree. And just a spot or two. And then I'm gonna over, overdo it. And then again, just, you know, a little dimension with some deeper brown. You can go back in again. If you have some parts that are still wet, you could even get a little more little more of that depth but if you start adding you can see some of these where it's not really wet then you're not going to get much bleed it's going to be more of a blob so uh, note to self sometimes you have to just quit while you're ahead I hope that you have enjoyed painting watercolor trees with me today I hope that you will check out all of the great tutorials on the pigeon letters blog. There's so much good stuff there with all of the design team creators. I hope you will look for me on Instagram at Sweet Seasons Art and check out my website. And I hope that you will post your trees on Instagram and share them and tag me at Sweet Seasons Art and at the Pigeon Letters so we can see all your beautiful work. Thanks so much. Happy painting.